Now, maybe it's just me, but I look at the internet as kind of a double-edged sword, and social media being a part of the internet as a double-edged sword. It can do some great and wonderful, awesome things, and represent the good in us as a society, and represent some bad and evil things, and represent uh, the ills of our society. And to me, when you go on to a Facebook, a Twitter, an Instagram, or whatever the hell else, um, if you're WWE several years back, don't, but whatever, well, I recommend it, but anyways, um, you, you, know, you have to know that this is uh, part of the equation. And if you choose to put yourself out there on social media, you have to understand that not everybody's necessarily going to agree with you. Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to be nice to you. And does that mean it's good? No. Does that mean it's fair? No. But life isn't fair. And at the end of the day, if you choose to post personal shit about yourself on the internet, or you choose to post things about stances you take or about different things, not everybody's going to agree with you. And to me, that's a wonderful thing. To some others, it's not. Now, I know being in a position where I've done these videos for six plus years now with the Facebooks and the Twitters and everything else, I know that I'll get reactions that are good, reactions that are bad, reactions that are terrible, reactions that are great, all in between. It comes with the territory. I know that and I understand that. Sometimes I go out of my way to egg on certain types of reactions. Other times, people just have those reactions and that's the way it is. Now, me personally, the way I look at it is such. I am a very big proponent of not only just free speech, but, you know, the right for everybody to be able to express themselves how they choose to see fit. So if somebody sits there and says something negative about me or something mean about me or something nasty about me or hateful about me, you know, being kind of the sick person that I am with some of the troll factor naturally built in, I laugh at those things. They humor me most of the times. And even if they don't, that's when, you know, you have the ability to respond. And respond I do. And I take people on and challenge them and debate them and discuss with them. You know, that's what the internet is supposed to be. It's like one big massive fucking forum. Even social media is still one big massive fucking forum. To me, it would be incredibly boring if everybody agreed with me all the time. Just like it'd be incredibly boring, but not maybe not to the same degree if everybody disagreed with me all the time. I don't want to just sit there and have people praise me or talk about how good I am or how right I am or how smart I am. I really don't. I tell myself enough that every single day. I welcome and live for sometimes some of the negative crap and some of the disagreement and some of the debate and all of that. I enjoy that. And you know, I realize sometimes it can go too far. And I most certainly, people in glass houses should not throw stones. You know, I have my things that I say that are very tasteless. I have my things that could be considered kind of over the edge. All the jokes about Psycho Sid's broken leg, uh, Bret Hart's stroke, Dino Bravo being dead. You know, not necessarily things I'm proud of per se, but I've said them. So, you know, when somebody sits there and talks about my eye twitch, or they talk about my snaggle tooth, or talk about me being skinny fat, or whatever the case might be, at the end of the day, I think it's kind of funny because it's who I am. It's not like I don't know this shit. And if I don't know this shit, what the hell world am I living in? What the hell alternate reality am I immersing myself in? Furthermore, if I can't handle people telling me what I already know about myself, you know, I'm talking about being arrogant and condescending at times and all these different things, all of these being true. And then why in the hell would I ever get out of the house? Why in the hell would I ever get on social media? It is who I am. So why hide from it? Why fight it? Why get mad or sad or cry or bitch or moan about it? You know, that's why I don't block people on YouTube. I don't block people on Twitter. Because Why? What good do I get out of that? If I sat there and started blocking people on Twitter, like some of the people 
that do videos on YouTube do, or in particular the people in the wrestling business do, to me you just validate how much of a punk and a pussy you are, and it's just that simple. Now granted, if you've got people threatening your lives and doing all of this and it's constant harassment, I get that. I get that. But a lot of times if you ignore it, eventually it goes away. Eventually. I mean, you know, I, I guess it's just, I don't get it sometimes why some people are so quick to be so block happy. Are you that insecure in yourself? Are you that lacking in confidence and self-esteem? Are you that are you that worried about what other people think about you to sit there and have to block people? This, well, that's punk shit. And yeah, there's plenty of people that do wrestling videos and just other stuff in general that seem to love to block and it's just like, stop being a punk. Stop being a pussy. You, know, you can call me many things. I hope most of you wouldn't call me a punk or a pussy because I don't do that punk pussy crap. I ain't got time for that. If people to have, feel enough away about me to respond to a YouTube video in the comments or tweet about it or post about something I've said or done on Facebook, then to me it's almost like a badge of honor. Like somebody actually cared enough, even if their comment is literally, I don't care what this guy fucking said, oh, ding dong, dumb dick, yes you do, because you bothered clicking on it and then responding to it via a comment of some kind in some form of the internet or social media. I just think it's sad for me, and this is just my opinion and my perspective, that me as a wrestling fan, I have more courage and balls and guts and self-esteem than many of the people in the wrestling business. Like over the past couple of weeks, I came to realize that several people within the WWE had blocked me on Twitter. Uh, who was it so far, I think? I've confirmed uh, JBL, which isn't much because he blocks everybody. Chris Jericho, uh, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Mick Foley. And there's probably more that I haven't even paid attention to. Now, typically, I'm not known as being somebody that will sit there and say, I'm going to come to your house and barbecue your children and eat them with a fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> you know, I don't talk about fucking your wives or doing all this other weird, stupid crap. But I am somebody that will express an opinion and sometimes be very vocal about it and all of this. But to me, I just don't get it. If you're going to be on social media, you have to be able to understand that some of that shit is going to come with the territory. It just is. And I think about each of the guys that block me, like JBL. It's funny, this is a guy that I had some really good conversations with back in 2012, one-on-one -on -one at the bar in Waterloo, Iowa, during the Hall of Fame weekend. And now he's blocked me. Why? Because I'm sure I probably disagreed with him on something at some point in time. And, you know, this is not even just a, a Republican thing. This is just a people in general thing. Republican, Democrat, conservative, liberal, in the middle, whatever. There's so many people that get so butthurt over other people's opinions to the point where they start blocking them. And you really have to wonder what's wrong with you. I can't even tell you what I did to get blocked by him. But I'm sure it was I disagreed with him at something at some point in time. And instead of having the guts being the bully that he has always been, and be willing to respond to somebody and actually engage in some type of debate and risking actually being proven wrong about something, he just blocks people consistently because that's what bullies do. When somebody calls you out on something or stands up to you or says something about it, you just cower away like a little punk. Ask Joey Styles how that works. Beat that ass. Um, Chris Jericho. You know, my whole thing is this. Is he'll sit there and talk shit to somebody like a Mr. Rout about how he doesn't understand how the business works. And, of course, all the dweebs sit there and agree with him and all this other crap trying to kiss up to him like he fucking cares about you. But this is the same numbskull that sat there and said a couple of years ago that the WWE doesn't intentionally sabotage people. Like even Triple H, God himself talked about two decades ago after the current call, the WWE sabotaged him for a period of time to teach him a lesson to make him eat shit and like the taste of it. Because somebody had to pay a price for the curtain call, and it was him. Chris Jericho should not be lecturing anybody on the inability to understand the business and how it works. While granted, future Hall of Famer, great, all of that. 
what been one of the more enjoyable talents for me to watch over the years. But when you sit there and say shit, like the WWE doesn't intentionally sabotage people, you have no right to be sitting there and talking about how somebody doesn't understand the business. Furthermore, what I don't understand in the case of Chris Jericho, you're currently working as a heel. If you are currently working as a heel and you're having that character supposedly carry over to social media, why would you block people? And this just in general, from a WWE standpoint, makes absolutely no business sense. Are we that sensitive in the WWE bubble that we can't handle criticism, that we can't handle critique, that we can't handle hate, that we can't handle people making fun of us? Like to me, if I'm working as a heel, I want people to shit on me. I want people to disagree with me. Because, man, that's where I can sit there and really get some attention on myself, really get some attention on the product, and, oh, my God, try to get over more as a heel. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like Mick Foley, would you block me because I sat there and said, stop being such a pandering pussy? No, it's disappointing to see a guy that I've respected so tremendously for so many years and some, sat there and done so many good things for the wrestling business be such a pandering putz. That's basically the extent of it. And even when I called him a pandering putz, I still talked about how much I loved him as a talent and respect him still to this day. That's the type of shit that you'll block somebody for? Like Kevin Owens has blocked me. I'm pretty sure it's because of the numerous jokes I've made about his weight and his belly and how shitty he looks in terms of his ring attire or whatever. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're supposed to be the world champion. You're supposed to be working as a heel. If you can't dispatch of me, deal with me, or handle me, then we got bigger problems at play. Furthermore, if you don't want somebody breaking fun of your fucking weight, then hit the gym, you fat sack of shit. If you don't want people talking about how scrubby you look, then stop looking so goddamn scrubby. It's that simple. And that's what we block people for on Twitter? Like Sami Zayn, I'm pretty sure he blocked me after sitting there and seeing me mention him in the tweet about 101 things better than Sami Zayn. You know, that's the type of shit that, again, if I'm working at, even as a babyface, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, how do I get this bad guy back? Oh, I'd say there's one thing better than you, and that's sex with a woman. Now, of course, nobody would believe that Sami Zayn actually has sex with a woman unless it's during his stint in his spare time as an Uber driver. But again, these guys in the WWE in particular block for some of the most punk-ass pussy shit imaginable, which, number one isn't good because you block enough people, you use social media as a platform to deliver your message, to deliver your programming, to deliver promotional materials, to deliver advertising for free for your product all over the world. Why would you want to cut that stream off in any way, shape, or form? It makes absolutely no sense to me. It's kind of like one of those things, you know, where your parents tell you if you don't have something nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. Well, that ain't any fucking fun. And surely your parents talk all types of shit about all types of different people. I know mine have over the years. But with that said, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. We've gotten to the point now where we went from all these tough dudes and these badasses in the wrestling business to now you've got all these crybaby wimps in the company on fucking Twitter blocking people for just stupid fucking reasons, like punk ass shit. Like, I got people all the time make fun of me for my twitching eye, talk about my receding hairline, even though, again, at almost 36 years of age, look at this fucking hairline. A lot of you motherfuckers that are 25 wish you had this, let alone 35, when a lot of you get to 35 wish you had this hairline. But my big ass fucking nose, my freaking snaggle teeth, my decaying front tooth, a freaking skinny fat belly, my annoying Mickey Mouse had sex with Roddy Roddy Piper in a meat grinder voice, especially when I get agitated and worked up. I know all this shit about me and it's all fucking true. See, you could even hear it right there. How the hell can I handle this? How the hell can I deal with this? How the hell can I be okay with this and laugh about this and these pussies get all upset and butthurt over people on Twitter. And I hate to call it my boy Alex Delexman, 
And I know some of y'all like to make fun of them sometimes. It is whatever. I choose not to engage in that. But in this particular case, I got to pick on him a little bit. Like he's got his followers tweeting Sami Zayn sitting there wondering why he got blocked. He probably got blocked because I probably mentioned him in a tweet about Sami Zayn at some point. If I had to guess, I'm sorry, Alex, it's probably my fault at the end of the day that Sami Zayn blocked you. But maybe, just maybe, instead of being a markish fool for a dipshit like this, maybe you focus on other people and follow other people and root for other people that don't treat you in such a manner, that don't act like such punk pussy bitches. Like, I can even tell you this much. I talk about shit about Dolph Ziggler all the time, the suspect sissy. Yes, and I even mention his name here. There's so many times that I've sat there and said things about him on Twitter and mocked him and made fun of him. He still hasn't blocked me. Same thing goes for Randy Orton, John Cena, Triple H, Roman Reigns. They haven't blocked me. Because they don't have time for that shit. Because they don't care about that shit. Or if they do, they'll respond. And they'll actually conduct themselves like men. It's the only way Dolph Ziggler conducts himself like a man. But at least he conducts himself like a man in some way, shape, or form. I mean, if you're at the point in time, like men like Foley, JBL, and Jericho, WWE Hall of Famers, legends, huge names, stars, if you're that bothered by what people say about you on Twitter and say to you on Twitter, then maybe the problem isn't the people, maybe the problem is you. And maybe it's time for you to get the fuck off the internet and get the fuck out of social media. And frankly, if this is the pussification of the wrestling business as it is today, maybe you all three need to get the fuck out of the wrestling business. I mean, we go from stories of Haku ripping out people's eyeballs with his thumb to getting blocked on Twitter because you talk about somebody being fat and 101 things better than them. I mean, am I missing something here? Am I just being an angry wrestling nerd here? Or, or am I really making sense here? Am I really making a good point? I think I'm making a good point here. I actually enjoy when people disagree with me. I like when people agree with me too, sure. I love feeding my ego with that shit. But man, I perk up, I liven up, I live for the disagreement. It's a lot of what I've been built off of the six plus years that I've been doing this shit. And what's terribly tragic to me in all of this is that I seem more comfortable with doing heel shit and acting like a heel and being a jerk to people and getting a certain type of reaction out of them than the people in the wrestling business that are actually getting paid money by a company to do it. Just unbelievable. No wonder I don't care about wrestling as much as I used to because I just don't respect a lot of the people in the business as much as I used to because I see what they are. I see who they really are. A bunch of insensitive, or, or a bunch of sensitive, excuse me, crybaby, low self-esteem, pussies. That simple. If you can't handle the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen. If you can't stand somebody not liking you, then A, don't be on social media, or B, if I don't want to respond to something stupid or mean that somebody says, you know what I do? I just glance over it, let it go, and fucking ignore it. It's not that hard. I promise you. I should not grasp that concept better than people than Chris Jericho, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. And then, then on top of that, like, Sami Zayn blocking into Lexman, unless he literally sent you a DM of a picture of his chin with a fake tattoo on there that said, Sami Zayn's nuts go here, what the fuck are you blocking the dude? If you're that worried about it to where you have to block anybody, period, then get the fuck off of Twitter. Or man up, nut up, and fight back. Pussies.